Well, good evening, everybody. Reverend Lynn Laborde coming to you from beautiful, quiet Portsmouth, Virginia. Had a lovely, lovely weekend. And we have with us one of my favorite people, one of my dear friends, Deb Rapasardi, who has an extraordinary relationship with Spirit. And I can't wait for her to share that with us. And um, you know that Rob is supposed to be joining us at some point. Um, so I'm sure that he will. Um, what can I let you know? I wanted to let you guys know that we have two more shows and then we're taking a break for the summer. We have an episode next week. Our friend Jean Fulter is going to be joining us. And then Rob and I will wrap it up on the Sunday of Memorial Day weekend for the final show. And um, then we're going to take June, July, and August off and resume in September. And we'll probably do a nice another round of all the guests that we've had before um, and add some new, new favorites that have come along the way. Hey, Rob, welcome. You're muted, Lovey. You're muted. Unmute, there we go. There you are. Hello, everyone. Hi, Lloyd. Oh, hi. hi. Hi, Rory. Sorry, I'm tardy. Was your, your timing is perfect. I was just saying hello to everybody on Facebook and letting them know that uh, we have Deb tonight, we have um, Jean Fulter next week, and then you and I will wrap up the, with the Memorial Day weekend show, and then we're going to take a few months off for summer vacation and start up again in September and bring back, you know, a lot of people that we've had and uh, probably find, you know, some new people along the way. So we're excited for that. There's a few people that we wanted to have join us who had to postpone, Stephen Durante, um, Reverend Dan, uh, Terry Leone. So that should be really fun. And it's all so, good. yeah, no, of course. It's all, it's all good. good. It's all good. Lloyd, um, how are you feeling, Lloyd? Oh, pretty good. I had to ask. You look so great with all that lavender behind you. I'm sorry, Lynn. <laughs> After all the all those posts the last two weeks, I was concerned, but you know, I knew you'd pull through. Power of the violet flame, baby. That's right. That's right. So, Rob, I always like to start off every show with you doing a reading from us for us. Okay. Um, and just sharing a little bit about your journey with spirit because it's just fascinating. Well, and how my uh, journey has been. How can um, we? Of course, my whole life, but uh, only in the last really five years or so has it really accelerated uh, to the point of inquiry and from inquiry. You uh, hit all those switches that start to give you a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then the more you get, the more you need and the more you want. And uh, uh, for me, as long as I stayed out of the rabbit holes and, 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 and just kept trusting in what I was receiving has moved me along this uh, track pretty quickly, pretty rapidly um, uh, by rabbit holes. Um, you know, there's so many things that can distract us, so many books, so many techniques, so many processes, so many different things that, that all work. But um, from what I've come to understand, they're of an older generation. They're old school techniques and repairs and processes. And in this new age of Aquarius that we're in now, pretty solidly, um, we can really create with our mind. We can really create with our thoughts, our words, and our emotions. Um, and the most important thing to help facilitate the creation of new is to get rid of all of the old, all of the stuff that doesn't serve us. All of those memories, all of those little tiny idiosyncrasies, things that bugged you and you forgot about and you buried them and, and arguments you may have, might have with your friends or your parents or uh, your first boyfriend, your first, first girlfriend, whatever it is. It's about getting rid of all that stuff, cleaning out the, the baggage, getting rid That's of it. all that crap in the warehouse. This way you make room for all the new stuff, you know? Um, and you don't realize until you start going within, meditating, and then uh, those things tend to pop up. Um, if you, uh, for me, it's always tell me what it is I need to know. Mm. When I would go into a meditation, so I'm asking, asking source, asking spirit to tell me what it is. And sometimes it wasn't really telling me anything. It was showing me something mm -hmm. and showing me that memory and like, oh yeah, 
I remember how uncomfortable I felt when that happened. Mm -hmm. Let me get rid of it. Let me just give it a dose of violet, you know, just wash that away. And the more I did that on this journey uh, of putting the violet around things and, and removing them, uh, the faster things went for me. And wow. when I met people like Lynn um, and other mediums and channels and teachers and different things like that, they'd all say, well, boy, you've done a lot of work. You've done a lot of work. And I'm like, what are they talking about? What? I had no idea what they meant about, I don't do any work. I don't do the processes. I don't, I don't deal with all that stuff. But what I came to realize was I did the work of clearing out the warehouse, just continually transmuting all of that Beautiful. that does not serve me. And uh, now there's very little there. And when it pops up, give it a dose of violet. Sometimes things come back around and you say, oh, I got rid of that already. Do it again. And, uh, you know, a double rinse sometimes works on it. But it's all, it's all good. It's all good. Hose that down with violet rays. Yeah, let me adjust some sound here. That's beautiful. beautiful. So, so do you have a reading for us tonight? Yeah, I do. I, 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 unfortunately, I wasn't able to be here last week with uh, on Mother's Day, and there was a Mother's Day message that I had. But I think may, many of you have have been able to read that. Just give me a moment to find one. I received some Saint Germain. I think that would be. Uh, Apropos right now, since we're talking about that would be, that'd be great. Okay, just bear with me one moment. Okay. Okay. Um a week ago, two weeks ago, someone came up to me, uh, a talented uh, channel, and said that uh, after I was at a meditation, a group session, and uh, she said, the 17th of May, the 17th of May, you're going to get some news on the 17th of May. I said, okay, well, I'm putting out there what I want. So there's a lot of things I want. Okay. Uh, so I left it at that uh that was a friday night so then last saturday uh i decided to dial up osiris mm -hmm. and uh excuse me one second get this from the beginning 17th of may is tomorrow no excuse me the 8th of may so yeah tomorrow's the 17th yes yes i know so i'm i'm holding back i'm gonna share it at the end but uh i said uh, greetings osiris now, in this, the night before, I had an opportunity to uh, channel, to sit and channel with this group. Uh, most of my channeling work is via the pen and paper. Uh, very rarely do I, you know, do live uh, trans or, you know, in-person channeling. And that's something that I've wanted to do and want to do more of. So this was an opportunity for me to practice that night. Um, and during that practice i decided i said well let me call an osiris let's bring in the big guy and you know let him help me out with this this channeling so this is saturday morning the next morning i said osiris thank you for all your help last evening it is most invigorating to connect via the live stream and channel that way i thank you for all your help i am in gratitude osiris said well done robert you have once again proven that your abilities to connect and receive are not limited to the pen and pad. You are a most gifted channel whose soul is one of renown. This is not said to swell your head, but merely to assist you in recognizing your abilities and is meant to encourage you to continue. It won't be long before you're gone. And I heard that song quite a few times. So uh, then I had this different energy and I asked, please effort St. Germain for me. And uh, I heard greetings, brother. <clears throat> I said, St. Germain, can you expand upon the message passed to me regarding 5-17-2021? Ah, yes, the 17th. To some, it is but an arbitrary date of no real significance. But for some, it means the world. For you, it is not simply just another day, but a day you can continue to expect great things. And that is all there is to be said at this time. Thank you. 
Okay. So that's where he left it. So I said, all right. Do you have a message that I may share with humanity? Okay. Oh, sorry. Scrolling is not... Uh... Okay. So much to be made of the changes that are occurring on, in, and around your world. We are constantly working and creating solutions to the issues and problems that are continually arising from those who no longer have a place to hide. And hence, they, the dark ones, have taken their show on the road. No longer hiding in the shadows, they are now front and center for all to see, if they choose. The dynamic could not be more obvious to those who are tuned in. But to most, it is just another day of nonsense and fear. Many upon your planet have refused to comply and go along with what what is highly recommended and have chosen to listen to their inner guidance and refuse to participate in this game any longer. That is because so many are waking up realizing that there is more to this picture, more to the story, and many would like to know what is the end game and when does the application of more rules, loosely written policies and recommendations cease. This is just another part of the awakening for so many having their sovereignty, sovereignty challenged like never before has caused many to look within and ask themselves, where do I fall and what category am I in? Leader versus led, and as most will decide to lead because that is the inherent nature of the soul. Only because of lifetimes of training and harsh experience have so many become complacent. But not to worry, the activations are occurring with each day. Each new blast of energy and frequency upgrade is to dislodge that old paradigm of the power over versus power under and the freeing of souls is what is taking place at this time. The recognition is massive as so many are now able to relax into the energies of pure source light with no distortion. The darkness was quite masterful in their application of technologies of chaos and distortion to the point where man was all but a slave and at so many levels, never realizing the hand that was pressing down upon them. Now that time has passed and the new age has begun. And with that comes the freedom to once again live your life in the way it was meant to be as an incarnate on Gaia, having the human experience with no outside intervention. <clears throat> Some may call this an experiment, but it is truly an experience, just like the roller coaster at Six Flags. It is meant to be enjoyed. It is meant to thrill, but never to dread. So with all that said, I would like to remind you that our task is not complete. And as you are aware, I highly recommend that you and all who resonate with this message redouble your efforts at the promotion and application of the violet consuming flame as the best tool out there to free yourself and everyone else from the traps of the mind and the program, programming of the dark that have manipulated the truth of your existence and rediscover your true origins. You are all a piece of the creator and oneness is Continue to explain and expand upon these truths and assist all who inquire in the technique of clearing and cleansing the CPU between your ears and make room for the new and upgraded software that is already available and waiting to be activated. This is your chance, so shine. So turn up that light and welcome the new peace and tranquility that is the, that the new age provides. This is the heaven on earth that all have signed up to experience prior to arrival. Each and every one of you is nothing short of magnificent and can never be anything less. I love you and wish you all the happiness and abundance this planet has to offer. So go forth and enjoy all you have created and will, will continue to create. Farewell, my brother, and namaste. St. Germain. That's gorgeous, Rob. So he said an awful lot in there. Yeah. An awful lot. But uh, 
you know, it's the reason with that violet to just transmute all the stuff that doesn't serve us, you know. We're in this new age of creation. And uh, we're blessed. We're really so lucky. I mean, we made it. We made it, you know. We did yeah. it. <laughs> that's all I keep hearing, you know, and I, I, all the time, the light one, the light one, I say it all the time, you know, 11 minutes after the hour, especially I pick up my phone and there it is. And I say it out loud and I continue to add energy to that, to the movement, you know? Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> they didn't bring up that, that message, but every other one brings it up. So <laughs> it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, here's what I can tell you about what St. Germain offers to all of us from what it is that I've experienced. There's a meditation that I lead in which I take people into a garden, a garden of spirit. And what was waiting there, and it was stunning when I saw it for the first time, was this chamber that's hollow, has an opening, and um, it's made of crystal and it has a little golden vent on it. And when you step into this, into this tube, into this chamber, violet flame comes and surrounds you and it just burns off the dross of all of the things that we've attached to us ourselves all of the pains and things we're not even aware of and he makes that available to everybody it is a gift to humanity and he is the guardian you know i think he's called the chohan is that right deborah and it's something that's so powerful and so extraordinary and, you know, Rob, your application of it is remarkable. I know that Carla Guito does a lot with it as well and channels him, which is really stunning. And well, as Norbert, Brother Norbert says, it's the panacea to everything that ails us. So we, like, like Frank's Red Hot, that she put that shit on everything. You put the violin on everything all the time. I'm telling you, I start every morning with it. That's why I named my newest dog Violet. Every morning... Oh. I, come on, Violet. I put her in a crate and you get her. Come on, Violet. Every night, come on, Violet, Violet. So it's How big automatic. is she now? Um, she's about a year and a half old. She's good size now. She's probably like 80, 85 pounds. She's big. So sweet. So, so sweet. That, I'm thinking, why not, right? What, a, what better way to, 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 yeah. to remember to say it? <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's just, I use it for everything. I use it every day. I use it to bless my property and my business and my friends and my family. Um, so we are very blessed this evening to have one of my dearest friends, Deb Rapasardi. Deb and I met when I posted, I think it was 2019. And I said, anybody want to do a study group for the Course of Miracles? And Deb was like, yeah, I do. And then I found out that she lived about 20, 25 minutes away down on the water on Long Island. And we started this study group and, you know, since then it's, it's gone galactic. Um, and Deb's gifts have unfolded most extraordinarily. Deb has been part of a group of, of some 30 people um, since the end of last year who have been studying with me and they've been learning a bunch of healing techniques and tools that I teach along the way. And Deb has excelled and become like the premier teacher in the community, the, one of the premier facilitators. And she's actually co-teaching a class with me right now. She's extraordinarily gifted, has a heart that is as big as the planet, it's probably even bigger, um, has compassion and love for people that's extraordinary. And um, she's one of the people that I go to when I'm hurt and when I'm in pain, because she holds such an extraordinary field of love and can hold you know, can hold the, the light as well as the darkness and help to transmute it. So I am blessed to call her my friend. I'm delighted to have her here and I love her dearly. Thanks for being here, my darling. Thank you. You expect me to speak now after that, right? Oh, that was just the, the red, <laughs> red carpet being rolled out. That was beautiful. Thank you. Um, but nobody's heart is bigger than yours, my dear. It just matches yours. It mirrors yours. Thank truly, you. truly, thank you. I am so grateful. So grateful yeah. for this journey with you, with Rob. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm crying. Um, so would you tell us about your journey thank with spirit? You. How did it begin for you? How has it evolved? What has uh, it been like? 
So growing up, people would come before me and I would just start saying things. I would give them advice and I had no idea where it was coming from. I didn't know anything about mediumship or spirit or my mother, my mother, you know, would go see psychics all the time. My, my, her cousin would read tarot cards. I didn't know anything about it. They also played with Ouija boards though. Um, (laughs) And, and I had no idea about anything, but I do know that people would, would, you know, talk about problems and I would just give them advice. And, and we're talking young, like, six, seven, eight years old, like I was talking like big people. And my friends eventually started calling me Debbie Know-it-all. And I, I was like, you know, I took offense to that. I love it now. But um, I, I was kind of like offended by it. I, I felt like they were being sarcastic. But I did know things and, and I had no idea why. Um, and then it was um 2016 and i had to have a breast biopsy and i'll never forget the biopsy was on a thursday and sunday i went downstairs to do the laundry and you know my husband's family's italian so they all come over on sundays for for dinner and um i was downstairs i was doing laundry and as i'm downstairs i heard you have breast cancer and my heart stopped for a minute. I'm like, where the hell did that come from? You know, these thoughts, they're, you're out of your mind, you know, and er- the story started running through my head and, you know, well, what will I do tomorrow? Will I be able to hold off until my husband gets home from work or will I call him and make him come home and, and drive with that, you know, crazy thought in his head. And so all these things just started going through my mind and Sure enough, the phone rang at 9, 10 in the morning the next day, and I answered it and grabbed a pen and a piece of paper. And it was the um, radiologist's office calling to tell me that I had breast cancer. So I They went told to you over it. the phone? They told me over the phone. She actually, so I had been going there for a number of years um, because a, my dear friend uh, had passed away two years prior from breast cancer, metastatic Mm -hmm. breast cancer. And so I had been going for, since I was like 30 years old. Um, And- Three years ago, right? Yeah, three years ago. I'm 57 guys, I'm pretty damn proud of it. Um, Soon to be 58, but in any event, so I knew knew it, that it had happened and I wound up thankfully only having to have radiation, a lumpectomy and radiation. And, you know, it screws with your mind. It really totally screws with your mind. Sure. Like you, like you can't even imagine. And I'll never forget the very first day that I was to start radiation. I had no idea what radiation was. I didn't know if I was going to explode or you know, I had no idea. They told me you're going to burn, you're going to blister. So I'm thinking something's coming, right? Prior to the first radiation treatment, they had made a mold of my body because they had to keep you in a certain spot. So I had to stay like this for 45 minutes and lay completely still so that they could mold my body. And that very first treatment, when I laid down and and I was supposed to relax into the mold, I I was as stiff as a board. If you had touched me, I would have crumbled into a gazillion pieces. Mm. Um, And now you're in a big, big radiation room. The the door is like, you know, a foot thick. It's a lead door. Um, And they they put me in the mold and I'm, I'm frozen solid. They leave. They pull the door closed behind them. And I'm and I'm terror. I'm terrified, beyond terrified. And I'm going to cry. I felt a hand on my shoulder. Mm. And I did not even need to turn around. I knew that there was nobody in the room. And I just immediately relaxed. Mm. My body just melted. And I laid down into the mold. And 
I wound up having to have 33 treatments <laughs> and every day I walked in there and I was like, yes, only 32 to go. Yes, only 10 to go. But I did it every day. Um, but that first day changed my life. I mean, totally changed my life. I had a son who was three and a half years old at the time. Yeah. You know, I always knew things, but didn't know where they came from. And then a friend of mine, um, a medium out here on Long Island, I don't know if you guys know Kim Russo. Um, she, I was getting um, just downloads for her. And I had no, I still had no idea what, what was happening. So I, you know, send her a message here and there. And she says, Deb, why don't you come meet me for breakfast? Let's go have breakfast. And I sat down with her and she said to me, you know, you're a medium. And I said, you're out of your mind, lady. And all of a sudden images started popping out into the air all over the place. Wow. And I was like, what the heck? She said, see, I told you. <laughs> and and then, you know, you know, I like everybody else, I took mediumship courses. I went for Reiki. I went to Terry Leone. She treated, you know, she did a Reiki healing on me. Mm. Um, and I became very interested in Reiki. So I took Reiki, you know, one through master. And then you and I took Karuna Reiki, one through master. Yeah, um, it was gorgeous. And, but of course, in the meantime, listen, I don't, I don't know that I'd be here on this show today if it weren't for you and that that just that one little message. Anybody interested in doing a course in miracles? And that really changed my life. That really truly changed my life. Um, and and of course your classes. Your classes help, you know, rid me of all my Catholic school stuff, of all my childhood stuff. I know, Rob. I know. I'm not a victim. I'm not saying I'm a victim. <laughs> <laughs> Violet flame that. Um, but yeah, so, you know, if it weren't for all the psychic surgeries and the, you know, the, the, um, the Akashic records readings and, and just all the quantum communications, quantum healing, qu quantum, quantum, quantum. The, I cannot... morning, the morning platform, the community that we've built, the friendships that we've built, the fact that acts of service is your first love language and you have done more work with anyone than anybody else on the platform, except for maybe me, but they're paying Except me. for maybe you, yeah. <laughs> you know, but you have, I mean, between the two of you, you have worked, both of you have worked your, like I put the three of us in this club of those who have worked their asses off, you know, like have gone in and done our work. And, and I know that about you and I love, I treasure that about you, Deb treasure that about you too, baby. Um, you know, but we're empowerers, you know, and, and you're teaching us these tools that help us listen, teaching Reiki is beyond. I mean, it's, it's, it's just such a huge power, such a huge gift that I love to give to others, but the psychic surgery, the, the, you know, um, the clearing, the clairs just, I mean, I, I can't even name them all. They're just amazing tools. And when you have a stranger come to your house because she works for a construction company and she's measuring your yard for pavers and you say to her, hun, come and sit down for a moment. Do you mind if I do a little bit of healing on you? And she says, oh no, I would love it. And now all of a sudden you're doing psychic surgery on her and she's now signed up for you to train to do Reiki. I mean, because yep. these gifts are just so incredibly beautiful, empoweringly beautiful. But Deb, you have to understand what is so extraordinary about you is you learned them because I've taught hundreds of people, however you apply them. And that's how you truly know you have knowledge. Thank I've you. literally taught hundreds and hundreds of people over the 32 years I've been doing this, right. how to do this. I had a, a gentleman approach me today, Dan Nigro, and he came to a couple of Sarah's classes at the sanctuary. And he said to me, hey, Lynn, remember that time when we, were, we worked together and you lifted that huge weight off my shoulders? He goes, what was that? Th I forget what that thing. Someone was asking me what that thing. I said, I call it psychic surgery. And he goes, oh, yeah. Um, where can somebody learn to do that? where'd you learn to do that? And I said, well, I didn't learn to do it. I actually developed the technique from a couple different philosophies that I studied. He goes, oh, really? And I said, yeah. And he said, 
oh, how could someone learn to do that? And I said, well, I have something called the Quantum Living Curriculum. I actually teach four tools over eight weeks and someone can sign up off the website. And he's like, I had no idea. And I laughed because I thought, this is a student, this is a client. You, you know, like I, I, I said to him, do you want to learn how to do this? And he's like, no, no, I'm good. But you took this, you took the very simple things that I've taught and now you're teaching them with me. You're applying them. You're like, you're just, to me, that's the way that you truly know that you have knowledge or wisdom is that you apply it. And I think that's what's so beautiful about you. What you're doing now with Reiki is amazing. I watched us go through Karuna Reiki one, two, and three. And the fact that you're now teaching it online and attuning people, tell us more about that. That's extraordinary. And about your relationship with Kuan Yin, because that's like yeah. I watched that unfold. That's really gorgeous. Yeah, that was that that is just beyond touching to me. But um Reiki completely empowers someone. You know, you don't have to just go to a Reiki healer. I love healing people. I do love healing people, but more so, I love to say, here, here's the gift. Give it to yourself every single day. Yeah. From the moment I took my first Reiki class, Reiki level one, um, I knew I was going to teach. I knew that was something that I was going to do. It was something that I was going to give to others. Um, that's what I am, right? I'm a giver. I, acts of service right. is, is yep. what I do. And I yep. love, love, love empowering people. And, you know, like some people, you know, the, the Asui Tibetan um, Reiki that I learned is very masculine. And it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks at times. Like, yeah. and I was like, oh God, and I'm really going to go take another level of this, you know? Um, and as soon as I said that, I kept hearing Karuna in my mind, Karuna, 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 Karuna. And I said, okay, I didn't know what Karuna was at the time. Mm. And um, I don't even know where I heard about Karuna Reiki. It wasn't even Terry. I heard about it somewhere else. Um, I, I think probably I, William Rand. I learned about it from you. And then I was like, oh, I want to do that too. Right. Yeah. And Kuan Yin started to appear, you know, I would just feel her presence and she's just got such an amazing, um, such an amazing, beautiful energy. And I'll never forget our, I think it was our Karuna level one. Yes, it was our Karuna level one because we were alone. I yeah. wasn't anywhere near the table. Yeah. And I felt this huge energy coming off of me. And Lynn said, I feel like I'm laying in the most beautiful pool of water. And I felt like she was just being cleansed. And I didn't touch her. I didn't move my hands. I didn't do any Boyson scanning. I did nothing. I stood there and just allowed the energy to flow through me to you. And that was just incredible, incredible, incredible. And then what? I think it was the day after we took our master class, right? Which was April 24th. I, I got a message. Um, can you teach me Karuna Reiki? And I said, of course I can. Um, because I had taken another course to be able to attune people online, which isn't something that you can normally do, but with COVID, you know, they, everybody came together and they developed this new technique. So I, I went and learned it, you know, COVID's not going to keep me down. So, um, and yeah, so then Reiki one happened. I I've taught, uh, one Reiki one class online already, which was amazing. The Karuna class was amazing. I have two more Karuna classes scheduled. I have another Reiki level one scheduled. I mean, it's just like the second I finish teaching a class, I get messages. Can you teach me? Can you teach me? Can you teach me? Dave, it's like it's your calling. I mean, yeah, literally. Oh my God, yeah. I definitely feel that. I definitely you know, feel that. I'm writing a book. I think I'm writing four of them, but one of them is called Promises to God. And I got this whole download one time that before we come to earth, we sign this soul contract of all the things we're going to do. Right. And there's like a hundred things that we say we're going to do. And then there's the top three things that we're absolutely going to do, or at least work on. And people aren't afraid of dying because 
you know, of anything other than they have to sit down in front of the committee and they have to, you know, the committee's like, okay. And they flip the, you know, the flip the, and they go, here's your list of everything you promised that you do. How many did you actually get done? And I'm like, this was a great lifetime. I got 13 of the hundred done. And they're like, okay, go to the back of the line. Or you're like, I got 87 of them, you know. And I think that we just, that's why I love the Akashic Records because the Akashic Records is where we can go and be like, hey, what's next? What, you know, like, like talk, imagine coming into the, into the Akashic Records wearing your vi violet flame, like, like um, Ghostbuster suit. <laughs> you know, and you're like, I'm cleaning house. I'm going to clear it all. I, I think that that's, I think this is what you came to do, babe. You yeah. Know? Yeah, it definitely is. Um, you, you take it's definitely it, one of the things. Oh, you're like, you're so, it's, I love watching you when you teach. I'm like, okay, you're teaching this thing. You're like, no, I'm not. I'm like, yes, you are. <laughs> like every time James, James, every time Jay, every time Jesus says you're going to do this thing, I'm like, no, I'm not. I always say no. It's I'm crazy that way. It's like, yes, you are. I'm not worried about it. Yes, you are. But the funny thing is, is that, you know, I had no idea that man was around me. I had no idea who was my brother in that lifetime. Okay, um, so I had who, no clue. Do you want to talk about who it was that put his hand on your shoulder? I know who it was because I had 33 I know radiation treatments. Do you want to talk about who it was? Um, well, I didn't find out. Okay, so I did find out. I There was a post on Facebook about something and... I wrote that I had 33 radiation treatments and the woman said to me, that's Jesus's number. And I said, it is, huh? Who's he, you know, <laughs> other than, you know, the biblical Jesus from Catholic school. But um, I had no idea that that was his number, no clue. And after that, it, it kind of like struck a little chord and then Lenny came along and you were channeling Mary Magdalene, you were channeling half of and then you were cha channeling Mary Magdalene and you said something. And I heard, tell her she's not channeling Mary Magdalene, she's going to be channeling me. And I said, okay, you're going to be channeling somebody else, somebody else is coming. And you said, and it ah. happened during our Karuna Reiki one class. Okay. Do you remember? No, I don't remember. <laughs> I had a client who was suicidal. Yes, 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 yes. And the client calls me, texts me during the middle of the class and says, I just want you to know that I've made my peace and, you know, I'm just calling to say goodbye. And Jesus came in and we did a healing on this woman and her sense of feeling suicidal had completely gone away. And he stayed with me. He came in that day and he stayed with me ever since. And I was channeling him. Yeah. That happened in, in class together. Yes. I and, had memories. And I actually did speak to her about it and she was so grateful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that I, was, that was really amazing. I had memories of being his youngest sister. And then you had memories of being his older sister. No, I never had memories. I was told, oh. I was told by someone else. I think it was actually, um, Terry, I think it was actually Terry Leone who told me that I was um, his sister. And I said, oh, okay, took it with a grain of salt. But the funny thing is, is that specific words have always come up in my life. Always happens to be a very important word to me. And he's constantly saying always, yeah. constantly saying always. And whether it's a, a song on the radio, you know, like, you know, like you're reading a book and a word pops out. Well, that happens to me all the time. I happen to be one of those beings that sees signs everywhere. I mean, I pick, it's like spirit does this to my face, you know, <laughs> like look, you know, and, and I, there, there's nothing that gets by me. Like they, they make sure I see everything. And so every time I hear a word, the word always, I know he's standing right there with me. He's, he's right there with me. Um, and there, and there are several other words too, but it, it's, 
it's but, finally come to I'm finally coming to the realization there's no more denying that he's very present. <laughs> very present. Gene and I um sign our emails to each other always and forever. And we have from the beginning. Yeah. So yeah, that there's definitely it's really beautiful. Yeah. And you know, since I was a child, I you know, I've seen spirit and when I was a child I, I'd swear that it was Jesus in my room. Um, although it was scary to me because I had no idea. I mean, I was I was really young. I was probably like four or five and had no idea who the man even was. My mother then bought a cross for me and hung it over my bed. Um, and yeah, and I've seen spirits here in the house too several times. So, you know, and my son. Well, your son them. saw a spirit one day and said, mom, there's yeah there's there's a guy sitting on the couch and i said yeah don't worry about him he's cool right but the but <laughs> from the time my son was like two years old he would say mommy the white man's in your room and i'm like what do you mean the white man's in my room it's all white it's just all white light mom and i said it's okay it's okay you don't have to be afraid of that you know and i just knew to to put him at peace, to put him at ease. Whereas my husband, on the other hand, was like, there's no such thing as ghosts. You know, you're not seeing anything. It's the reflection of the light, you know. So, but yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're all waking up. All of us. Yeah. Together. No one is exempt. No. No, the light won. And we're all, we're all in one. for it. Yeah. Super cool. Rob, was there anything that you wanted to ask Deborah about her journey? Um, well, when you said you kept hearing the word always, and I found out that very interesting, that word, you know, like out of all words to, to hear and then to be able to assign a meaning to it or, a, you know, apply it in your life was pretty astounding, you know? Like, I don't know what I would have done with that if I just kept hearing always, 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 you know? You know, it, it, it's, it's funny because I can't even um, tell you where it first started, but I was very young and it would just come flying out of my mouth. Um, or I would, you know, be signing a card and I would put always, like I had to add the word. Oh, that's so funny. I've done that. That's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah. So That's when so you crazy. when something happens to you that you don't normally do, but you you feel the urge, gosh, you know what? We're all channels. We've all channeled from the moment we were conceived. We've channeled. That's what we do. But we can either channel ego, or we can channel love. Right? Our higher self. Right. Exactly. Yep. So when you're channeling love. You're channeling your your higher self. I mean, that that's what you're connected with, right? But when you're channeling ego, you're screaming, you're cursing, you're swearing at the guy that could just cut you off. And hey, listen, I do it too. I do it too. And then I'm like, oh, but I bless you with the blessings of Christ, you know. <laughs> and I forgive myself, you know. Um, and so I always like, listen, I am having a human experience. That's why we're here to have a human experience and find our way home. Right. Yeah. So I forgive myself immediately, but yes, Rob, you know, there, there are certain things that, that like, you know, like the word always, there were just, it like, it, it, it just sounds like a bell in my head, like a beautiful ding, you know? <laughs> and, and I'm like, Oh, okay. I pay attention, you know, but that's been my whole life. So, um, you know, when you're driving on, on the LIE, right? And there's a big truck in front of you and it says FR, who was my father-in-law, he was Frank Rapazzardi and his date of birth, right? 724 is on the truck. And then spirit goes like this. <laughs> and there's this, and there's a sign you, you pass the store that says spiritual advisor. <laughs> There you go. Right. Right. Perfect. You know? Yeah. So, so there, there, there are many words that, that really, um, are important to me. They're just, it lets me know of the presence around me really. 
you know, the, the beautiful. beautiful presence around me, the beautiful energy. And I can't wait to, to really um, become more acquainted with Kuan Yin because I know that we're more, we're more than just, um, you know, uh, uh, she's more than just a guide for me. I know that. I haven't gone into the records. I should go into the records, but I read her story and I cried. I cried because I felt as though I was there with her. Right. You know? I'm sure you were. Yeah. So, um, well, she was in the forest by herself, so I don't know, but. No, but, but you guys, I mean, yeah. you have a relationship. I remember right. yeah. that day so clearly. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. So I'm blessed. I'm, I feel so blessed. Yeah, I don't know anything about Kuan Yin. I know powerful female energy. So uh, actually, she came in an incarnation first as a male, and completed everything that she needed to do in one incarnation, yeah. and then came in as a female, completed everything she needed to do, and she's actually a bodhisattva yeah. who's here um, in service to Earth. Yeah, Can you see this wrong? Ordinary. Yep. Yeah, that's. Where did you get that image from, Deb? Um, Terry Leone. Terry Leone wow. makes these cards, and this one is called Compassionate Action. And she she blends, she she makes mandalas, which, I mean, I have thousands of, not thousands, all right, I have- Hold that I up have, again, please. That's and watched. I actually buy them from her. And I have these, the Blessed Mother, I have Yeshua, and I actually give them to people. Like, I, I just know who to give what to when I went when I went to um, uh, the doctors recently I said something said go go grab one so I grabbed the Kuan Yin and I gave it to the nurse there and I said I just want you to know that she's around you and wanted you to know that I so again like I didn't know how I knew these things but this has been my whole life my whole life and I'm so so blessed. Thank God. I'm so blessed. So grateful. Yeah. <laughs> Kuan Yin is known as the goddess of compassion. Wow. That's yeah. I, I bring in Kuan Yin in the mornings when I, some mornings I'm like, wait a second, let me bring in all the ladies and not all the men energies, you know? So I, she's always part of the, the female entourage. Did you ever channel anything from her? Have you no, I haven't. I, I haven't yet. But, Why uh, don't you ask, Rob? Yes. Yeah. That, that would be amazing. That would be really Allie, amazing. Allie, Allie, I'd I love to hear it. I'd love to hear what she has to say. I, I had an extraordinary experience yesterday. And Deb, you weren't on the platform this morning. No. So you didn't hear it. But uh, in the middle of my journey yesterday, Sophia came to me. And it was extraordinary, the energy that she carries. Sophia is, a, is the, the female Christ. Yeah. And she told me that we're going to be working together. I'm not quite ready for her yet. I'm feeling a little shy, which is unusual because I'm not usually a shy person. And then Hathor came through and she said you, that your entire focus right now is to surrender to the flow. Do not plan anything. Do not be goal oriented. Do not use the masculine for anything right now, but to surrender to the feminine. So I'm going back to the Sophia code and back to the initiations and back to reading the book and really surrendering to that. Yeah. Sophia said, I'll be ready when I'm finished with all the initiations in the book. And I know that you've been through them. They're really, and Kuan Yin it has one of the chapters, Isis, Hathor, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, Kuan Yin, Green Tara, White Buffalo Woman, and the Golden Sophia Dragon. So the eight goddesses that are represented in that book. Yeah. <sighs> Incredible. And I'm actually feeling okay. Hathor's presence today. Right you now. Did? Yeah, I'm feeling it by you. Oh, yeah. No, she's yeah. here. Yeah. She's here. I'm sorry, Rob. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I mean, to jump in like that. No, that's okay. So your primary uh, modality and teaching now is Reiki? Yes. That's your, okay. Yes. Now, if someone was to come and say, I would like a reading, how does that go for you? A reading? Do reading for people? Are you doing Do I that do readings for people? Yes. You know, Rob, I don't, I don't ever set out to do readings for people. You know, what happens to me? She does healings that, for people. Yeah, I do healings right. for people. But 
what will happen to me is I'll always be in the right place at the right time in front of the right person. That's God driven. And I've got nothing to do with that. I show up, I show up where I'm supposed to be. And I say, like the words will come flying out of my mouth. <laughs> like I can't even stop them. Um, and I'm talking with my hands. My hands are going all over the place. And It's like Tourette's yeah. without the tick or the curse. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, you know what? Yep, I'm just the vessel today. And whatever you have to say to that person, I know they need it. But my one thing is, is, you know, through channel training, um, and I had a couple of experiences I will not allow anything that is less than love to come out of my mouth. And I've stopped it. I've, nope, I'll clam up. I will, you know what it's like trying to get that cl shuck yep. a clam? Okay, that re is refusing to open. That's what will happen. I will not allow that to come through. I don't feel it's necessary. There is, you could turn the corner and, and find someone that's gonna be nasty to you or mean to you or tell you something wrong about you. No, I'm gonna tell you everything that's right about you. I'm going to empower, empower, empower you until you know, until you know there's nothing wrong with you. You are perfect exactly the way you are. And that's all anybody needs to know. That's it. So I think, yeah. I so think the word I, I would use for you that I love is you're relentless. Like you will yeah. save people. When I had to do some of the most painful healing of my life, you were the one that helped me through it. Yeah. And you have just a huge capacity for love and for healing and healing that is seeing the truth of someone and bringing them back to that point. Right. You know, like, like being able to help a person reveal the truth and sickness and disease has no place with the truth. Lesson 136 today was so profound. And the lesson is that sickness is a defense against the truth. Yeah. And Jesus was saying in the, in the Course in Miracles lesson that you have to go into the mind and look for the places where we have tried to say the body is real by having sick, sickness and illness in our bodies. And we're defending us, ourselves against the truth of us, which is that we are as God created us and the body is not real. And I was so tempted to use that like my ego was tempted to use that against someone who had been sick recently. Yeah. And I was like, just don't do it. You know, like just forgive them. Yeah. And just Jesus was like, that wasn't meant for you to use against anybody else. That was you for you, for you to look at the places where you think that right. you're ill, where you think that you're sick and know that sickness is a defense against the truth. And the truth of you is that you are whole, perfect and complete. Yeah, exactly. So powerful. Whole and I, Perfect, perfect and complete. And, complete. and I watch you bring that forth in people. And I think that's yeah. magnificent. Because, you know, listen, you know, as a child, parents were divorced. I struggled too. You know, I was abandoned by my father when, when I was two. So I never felt whole or complete, right? Um, and so it took a long time to get here. But I do want to tell you something else, Rob, and, and for you too, Lloyd. Healing isn't just about doing reiki there there's more than just reiki we all have this energy within us it flows around us it flows through us and i've played with this energy ball my entire life i've played with this ball in my hands my entire life and i've stretched it and i've made it go five six feet big as far as my arms could stretch and i've used this energy to heal I've used it to heal others, but more importantly, I've used it to heal myself. And you can direct this energy at any pain just by setting the intention. I'm using this energy to heal. I fell down the stairs and if, if I were to show you a picture of the bruise, and I don't know if I can actually even um, do that, but it's... Um, Okay, here, here is my thigh. Can you see this? That's my thigh. It was about two fists big, right? Can you see that black and blue? And I literally, what? Two fists. Yeah, two fists. It's, it, it was big. I was <clears throat> Actually, maybe bigger. Because it was, it was as wide as my thigh. But I fell down the stairs and I took the energy in my hand. And, I, and I, I couldn't sit down. I couldn't do a 
thing. And so I saw, I started working on it and I pushed energy in and I pulled it back out and I pushed more energy back in and I pulled it out. And I did this for a good half hour, right? Till I felt like, okay, it's complete. And this was long before I ever even knew about Reiki, long before I knew about Reiki. And so we have the ability within us to heal everything and anything. Sandy Garnada says the exact same thing. Yeah. yeah it. She's a medical so intuitive. True. It's so yeah. true. We just forgot, right? We drank that water that, right. that said, let's forget. <laughs> let's come here and forget, right? Yep. So we drank from that well that and we forgot, that right? Amnesia. Exactly. So, um, yeah. It's the river it's all about Eve. me. Yeah. Um, so Deborah, where can people reach you? Uh, Bren Mary just said that she's excited to be taking the yes. training with you. Yeah, she's going to start her Karuna One journey. I am so um, excited to give this to her. Oh my God. I so love it. Amazing. Um, they can reach me at, I'll put it in the chat. Here, I'm going to uh, put it on. Does that help? Gonna, should I put yeah. it on Facebook? You can put it on Facebook. Okay. All right, Deb. Deb Rappersardi. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and your number is? It's 516-606-8328. And that's Cody, whose birthday it is today, by the way. Happy birthday, <laughs> Cody! She's like, play or, with me, play with me. For Reiki. Or, or um, they could just email me at soul to soul mentoring dot at gmail.com. Soul, soul number two or no. T.O.? Teal. So to soul. So to soul to soul. Mentoring. Mentoring at gmail.com. I love that. Yeah. That'd be a great website. I'm a website junkie. I own 25 domains. Yes. Maybe 27, but who's counting? Maybe. I'm like, oh, that's a great domain. Go, Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. a maniac. Um, I love you all. Thank you so much for being here, Deb. It's been a delight. I Thank love you for you. being Thank my you. sister. Thank you for being my soul sister. Thank, Thank you for being my friend. I adore you. I adore you. Right back. Lloyd, at thank you. you for showing up all the time. You are so steady and so loyal and so constant, and I adore you. I love your messages. Lloyd had a reading in which he found out that I was his mother. Now he calls me mom, which I think is adorable. That is so back. cool. I, know, I didn't cute. hear that. That's that fun. is so cool. You know, he's like, hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's awesome. precious. It's precious. Thank you, everyone. And Rory, thank you for being here. I love you are so, another one, loyal, every single week. Precious. Rob, I love you. This has been such a beautiful journey that we've been on since September. It's very interesting. Very yeah. Lot, lot yeah, it's been fascinating. And we have, uh, our guest is going to be Gene Fulcher next week. Gene has had an extraordinary, I mean, talk about from the sublime to the ridiculous. Um, we have a really fun conversation to have with you guys next week. Okay. And then Rob and I will be finishing up that last weekend of uh, Memorial Day weekend that Sunday. And um, I'll be doing some channeling at that point. Hathor is definitely going to be coming through the message. Um, I'll be coming through, provided there's a good Wi-Fi signal next week. So we'll be good. Where are you going to be? Carolina. Okay. And if you can't, that's fine. Yeah, Gina, no. I'll settle in by then. But wait, we have to find out what's happening tomorrow. Oh, yes. I'll have to jump on, of course. Yeah, You'll I mean, have to jump on at some point. Plus, or, I want to know what Kuan Yin has to say. I want to I wanna read what she has to say to you. Okay. Yeah. Because she's going to have... Well... <laughs> Thank you, Lloyd. Hathor's come, Hathor's come through in messages, right? For you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, did Hathor want to say something this evening? Is that? She always wants to say something. She always wants to say something. Greetings, beloveds. Greetings. Greetings. Welcome. 
What I want you to know is how loved you are. What I want you to know is how magnificent you are. What I want you to know is how known you are by us. Our assistance is here for you always, beloved ones. We have traveled with you. We are with you now. We are with you always. And what there is for you to know is that you are known. You are spoken of. Eyes are upon you. Love is with you. Assistance is guiding you. For those of you who feel that at any moment that you are somehow alone in this universe, alone in this journey, allow yourselves to lean back into the presence of love. Allow yourself to feel the energy that Deborah spoke of, the very essence and the substance of spirit that surrounds you, that is the very fabric, the very makeup of your reality. And when you allow yourselves to disconnect from the egoic mind and fall into the arms of grace, there you find us waiting for you, supporting you, loving you, embracing you. You are known, beloveds, and we call to you and we guide you. We beckon you to come and join us. And every once in a while, you catch a glimpse of us. You hear us as we speak to you, as we show you signs where they show up in your numbers and they show up in your seeming chance meetings and the accidents that you have along the way. Beloveds, there are no accidents, as you well know. Everywhere you look, were you to allow yourself to see beyond the illusion, beyond the shadow, beyond the fear, to the truth of what exists in front of you, you would see the landscape of purity and of light of which you belong, or that is the essence of your beingness. Know that we come to you when you call, and we do invite you to call to us, beloved ones, for then when you grant us permission, we can support and love and direct you back to the truth of you. The truth of you, which is truly only love and light. So as you continue on your journeys, beloved ones, go with our blessings. Go with our love and go with our truth. Greetings and salutations, dear ones. Thank you. Indeed. Most wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. That was perfect. That was gorgeous. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. That's beautiful. I love you guys. Yeah, she's magnificent. She's Talk to you all during the week. Enjoy it. It's going to be better be tomorrow. Can't wait to hear what tomorrow's. All right. Yay. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Love, love you guys. Good Thank everybody. you. Out Thank in you. Facebook land. We'll see you guys again next week. Yes. Good night, everyone. Good night.